you were agreeing to be videoed Mr Jabir on the back of the PLT talk where you showed us some six top tips for eye examinations for GPs. What is your advice for us? Well, they're very simple. You don't need any sophisticated equipments. You need only a torch or ophthalmoscope, and I assume all uh, GPs have that in their uh, offices. Uh, you need, a, very important, the snail and chart. I assume everybody has it. There are two types, the six meters and the three meters. And simply just count a few steps, three steps to do the smaller chart, six steps to do the bigger one. And the visual acuity is so important if you check it and it's fine, that means all the visual pathways from the front of the eye to the brain are okay. So that will give you a good clue. So, so that's the first examination. Mm -hmm. The second one is to have a look at the eye, if it is red. What sort of redness is it? Is it around the cornea? Is it a sector or is it full circumference or is it peripheral? And that gives you clues as to the severity of the condition and the referral in the end. So if it's around the cornea, what we call a ciliary injection, that means you have to refer the patient because they usually have either a glaucoma or uveitis or keratitis. And if it is in the periphery, it indicates simple diseases like conjunctivitis, um, whether it's allergic or dry eyes, or just simple really to treat uh, in your practices. The third, probably you won't pick it, assuming your patients will clean their eyes before they come to you if they are having a discharge, asking them about the history of the discharge. Is there a discharge or not? Is it sticky? What's the color of it? And that's important. It will give you, gives you clues of the uh, nature of it. Is it bacterial? Then you can initiate antibiotics, usually greenish, yellowish. If it is watery only, that indicates viral or allergic. The fourth point is, again, using your torch. The cornea is a convex mirror, so you can see the reflection of light back on you. That means the cornea is fine, so the disease is not in the cornea. While if it is hazy, dull reflex, uh, a bit of opacity, it indicates a cornea problems, keratitis, ulcers, inflammation of some sort, and then you can focus on the cornea as the source of the problem or the red eye. And of course, the pupil as well, you can examine it. The shape of the pupil, is it circle, is it distorted? Is it uh, small, is it big? Does it react to light? And these are, again, a lot of clues in that. If it is a red eye, acute red eye with a big pupil, then you think of glaucoma. If it is a very small pupil, a red eye, reduction of the vision, you think then of uh, uveitis. Uh, in the beginning, uveitis, acute uveitis is usually small pupil. And of course, the most uh, difficult for GPs is to examine the anterior chamber. And uh, I will demonstrate that on you, Julie. Have a small beam of light, look at the patient from the side, open your eyes, ma'am, and then you can see if the dome of the cornea is away from the uh, iris, which is usually flat, then it's a deep anterior chamber. If it is in touch with the iris, then it indicates a shallow anterior chamber. And for people 40 plus, probably they need a, a little magnifier in the other hand, and the torch in the right hand, and then they will be able to see that. If not, then don't worry, it's not a problem. You can rely on other clues. Okay, thank you. So visual acuity, uh, most important. It's helpful for you to differentiate for us whether it's central reddening or peripheral reddening, uh, and that's a, a good quick top tip for us. Indeed. Um, uh, but um, just to ask you a little bit more about, do you expect GPs to be staining every eye? And when would we want well, to It's a good idea, really. If you have anything like, for example, somebody with red eye and photophobia, uh, it gears you towards the cornea, so then you have to stain it. I think you should have fluorescein. It's very innocent, it doesn't cause any problems, it doesn't co rarely causes allergies, it doesn't sting the eye, so you have fluorescein in the fridge, stick a drop in and use blue light. And then you'll see a lot of, uh, uh, if it is punctate staining, you can indicate dryness. If it is a big ulcer, it indicates maybe a contact lens wearer having an ulcer after that or some, somebody rubbing their eyes, or after a trauma, or uh, a mother with a child with a nail, and so on. What about expecting GPs to evert the lid and remove foreign bodies? Uh, well, it depends, really. If you are brave enough, why not? You use, uh, pull the, ask the patient to look down, pull the lashes and the lid margin a bit down, and then use a cotton butt on top of the lid, and then evert it. 
but I don't expect a lot of GPs will be able to do that. That's uh, pure ophthalmic. But if they can do it, that's fine. Remove it with a cotton bud or with a green needle, if you are brave enough. And finally, uh, taking swabs. Uh, when would it be indicated for us that to be part of our examination? Well, for a simple, uh, you know, straightforward conjunctivitis, I'll start probably some antibiotics, watch what's happening within a few days. If it's still sticky, then you take a swab and send it for a test. But I will advise to take the swabs before you put the fluorescein in because they may spoil the results for the microbiologists. They rely on fluorescence sometimes.